thank you for the invitation, first of all. And we have now roughly 55 minutes in front of us. And we have chosen to, to divide the agenda according to the following. And the first slides are in Swedish, since we thought that we should have it a bit local. Uh, but we will start uh, briefly about who we are as a company and our collaboration together with Better. Uh, we are also bringing up some of the trends, how we see the development on the market. And the big part of this hour will be on our offering, which we call Connected Health Cloud. It will start with a presentation and a final with a demo. And then we have some time for questions. And as also said, you can also pose questions while we're doing this presentation. So uh, the people that you will meet up here today, it will first be myself. And my name is Cecilia Tekta. I'm heading up the digital health practice here in Sweden. And with me here today, I also have Alexander Rosén, also part of the digital health practice here in Sweden. Uh, and uh, we are both working in this domain since many years back. And with us, we also have our uh, Dutch uh, colleagues, Eric and Kasper, and they will present themselves later on. But, but Eric is also our global head of the digital health practice in EY. So if we start off just very, very briefly about our company, and some of you know what we are doing in this space, and for some of you, you believe that EY is only an insurance company. And yes, we are an insurance company. We are a large network. We are roughly 50,000 people globally, and divided in four different business areas where assurance is where we come from. We have also tax, and we who are here today, we are representing the consulting practice, and we also have transactions. And the consulting practice is divided into functional areas for business and innovation is one of them. The technology and digitalization is one. We have finance, a lot about organization, change management and, and leadership. We are working with logistics, risk, data analytics, cyber. So we have many different functional areas where we are focusing on. But when we go to the market, we are doing that from, from different uh, industry domains. And healthcare and life science is one of our uh, prioritized domains that we are working in. And all of us are belonging to the technology practice and working uh, in the healthcare and life science domain. So we are focusing fully on this domain. And if you look into the healthcare, we have a big practice globally with a lot of people. Uh, you see big figures, I don't have to go through them. But we are in Sweden, I would say one of the largest practices as well with nearly 200 people working, not every day with healthcare, but has a, a focus on it. We have also the Center of Excellence for uh, Digital Health, which uh, Eric is heading up globally. And we have digital health practice in most of our countries. And here in Sweden, we are roughly 20 people working in that area. Even though we are a big, uh, big network, uh, we are working very, very closely with our alliance partners. And from a global perspective, uh, uh, we have roughly a uh, 40 alliance partner, and Better is one of them. So we have a global um, a global agreement together with Better, and are doing work in many different countries together. And Microsoft is one of the other big global alliances that we have. Uh, Alex, you can go to the next one. Uh, if we then see what we are doing within the healthcare domain uh, in the digitalization, and of course, regions are our large clients, but we have a um, strategy where we are working in the entire ecosystem. For us, it is important to see, to see the healthcare from different views. So we are 
mainly, of course, working with the regions and municipalities, but also with private caregivers. We are working with some of the EHR suppliers, with different uh, governments, etc., but also, of course, with the life science areas. Offering wise, we are working, of course, in the EHR area, in the health data, and with patient centric healthcare. You can see some of our clients below. Uh, and we are uh, we have people in Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmö. You can continue, Alex. Uh, just now <laughs> going into, but what are we in fact doing in this particular area? So, and we are doing quite a lot, I would say. First of all, if we start on the left hand side, side, we have own offerings, and that is the offering where we should focus today with the connected health cloud, where we are working, of course, closely together with better. We are also doing more strategic work, and some of you have uh, probably seen the report that we did for Region Stockholm uh, in, in this area, in the Open HR area. We have also just published a new report that we have written for Nordic Innovation when it comes to health data sharing from a, where we had done a business case on a Nordic level of what we gain of sharing the healthcare data. But for sure, we are also working, and that is a main part, I would say, with implementation of open HR uh, initiatives, but also in the EHR and data platform area in general. Uh, we uh, one of the references that we have here is um, customer or a hospital group in Germany. Uh, and finally, uh, for sure, we are also part of the Open HR uh, <coughs> community. So, so as you can see, we are working from different perspective into this particular field. So by that. I would like to hand over to you, Alex, and just take some of the trends and how we see the development on the market. Yes, thank you. Uh, and we know that the, the section that we will go through now is, is not of any news to you guys because you are working with this uh, during your everyday, uh, everyday work. But we figured that we would uh, uh, still go through a little bit of the things that we are seeing uh, that is infecting also uh, how we are sourcing our IT components within the future here. So as we know, we see a big transition within the healthcare today. We see, for example, that the physical place for where the care is happening is uh, changing from the, the hospitals, of course, of uh, opening up more towards the, the patient homes. We see that the data access is transitioning from the more uh, supplier side towards the caregiver and that the patient should own its data um, on a bigger level than his, his uh, go, going back. We also see that the reference points from how treatment is being made up is shifting from a population perspective to an individual perspective, which is of course very important. Mm -hmm. um, we also see that the, the, the role of the physician is changing from a more um, bigger steps to a, to a guiding uh, guiding role. And we also see that the point of how data analysis is being done historically from a more aggregated point of view, um, but in the future, uh, being able to open up more and be able to do that from a more detailed perspective. And we see that all these, these, these trends and perspectives are also changing, of course, of how the underlying IT systems is being sourced, which is a really important thing to take with us here going into the future. Furthermore, we also see that there is a big shift in how the, the IT landscape is being built up. Um, going back from a historical point of view, we see the, the, the siloed architecture on the left-hand side here, where we have a lot of different systems not talking to each other, often with the data locked in in each system, which is a, a big boundary for how we can share data between systems and also in order to interpret data from a more overall level. Uh, on the mid-hand side here, we can see how we foresee that the technology is developing into the future. What we see is that we have a scalable data layer in the middle here, which is being made up of 
up on a uh, vendor neutral standards, uh, scalable, as I said, but also where the application layer uh, is, is being drawn up in this picture around, of course, the, the data layer, but where we see that the applications around here have to coexist in a bigger way than historically, and where maybe each of the applications is doing a little less functional work, but together they unite and create a really good and efficient ecosystem. Eric will talk more about how the different standards are complementary to each other, but we of course also see that different standards have to coexist. Um, we will talk more about, of course, open EHR here today, but uh, also other standards for other purposes. Uh, we think also that there are some important things to think about when establishing this, uh, this the, the ecosystem that we will talk about more here today, or the underlying platforms covering uh, of course, the strategy from how the applications and underlying platform will act as a whole, really important. How this will be steered from a governance perspective, also, of course, really important. The regulations and frameworks of how the underlying data can be used and not be used. How we foresee that the architectural uh, landscape will look like and evolve over time, of course, with incentives from both internal and external players. Uh, what we're doing here, uh, number five here is also su super important in order to knowledge share among organizations, in internally within organizations, but also, of course, to be inspired by others that has done similar things and learn from them. Uh, and maybe the most important one here is also, of course, to work with operations, include operations into the transition process from the start in order to uh, include perspectives and different needs, but also where we know that there are common needs that we actually can work from. So with that being said, I will hand over to you, Eric, uh, and I will stop sharing my screen here to tell us more about our solution, UI Connected Cloud. Yes, I will. Thank you. Just a second, popping up my screen. Presentation mode. Are we there? Yes. Good, good. Um, well, thanks uh, uh, for your time and giving us the option to explain Connected Health Cloud because we are working uh, um, with Better, of course, uh, uh, who offer a full blown uh, clinical data repository. Um, but you might ask, uh, so what, what's EY then going to add? And um, well, we've been working on this for quite a, a, a uh, a while now because uh, uh, EY believes that we really need to create a vendor neutral data layer uh, consisting of uh, semantic rich uh, data structures. So we want to create this uh, uh, right data in, uh, environment for the future of health. And let me just elaborate a, a number of the features we think are important for an open data platform. Um, First and for all, uh, it, it all starts with, with the people and, and what you're building on top of it must be really user centric uh, and uh, better offers a lot of tools to create really good uh, user interfaces, uh, uh, well designed uh, with low code features, etc. Um, but it's also important that everything what happens there is, is properly governed, uh, both from um, uh, how are uh, the different CDRs uh, that's part of our concept connected and how are they governed, but also how is the data governance uh, organized and how is data privacy organized. For sure, it must be interoperable. It must be interoperable uh, from the point of view from open air, but also interoperable with solutions that are not yet uh, open air. That could be lab systems, could all, all kinds of systems using HL7 version two, version three, uh, HL7 Fire and all the release versions uh, of Fire. Um, and it's also important that, that what we develop is portable. So the, the, the applications developed on the data layer should be able to, to smoothly uh, work on different parts uh, of the same data layer and, and using and leveraging the data in there. Um, today's uh, presentation will mainly focus on the federated feature. Uh, we really believe that in a, in a modern setup, the data controller should be able to use the access controls to, to govern the clinical data repository from their side. And there's a lot of features in the better repository that can actually do that. Um, but uh, if you want to aggregate those data, maybe cross regions or uh, across the different uh, providers in, in the region, you will need a federated uh, system. 
and uh, well uh, it would be great for for any vendor that uh, uh, an entire country or a lot of regions would buy only their cdr uh, but in the end there could be a point in time where you decide to move uh, uh, to another cdr technology um, or maybe you want even to mix uh, and match uh, different CDRs because maybe for some area there's already a vendor with uh, an open air capability uh, or uh, vendors building open air capability on top of their solutions. From an UI point of view, we find it very important that what we create in the data layer is really vendor neutral. Um, because the data is there for life uh, and not for the time uh, that the vendor is uh, offering you services. It must also be a very flexible modular architecture with microservices uh, so that you really have this plug and play integration is important. Um, open APIs, of course, so if you have a data layer, uh, uh, make sure that, that everybody can leverage the power of that data layer using open APIs and it must be secure and safe. And next slide, we and I will not go through all the 15 uh, uh, features here uh, because the first 12 features are, I think, features very well known to uh, many people in the audience uh, and also shared uh, um, uh, by the different uh, vendors you, you, you talk to. Um, and actually, I think in Sweden, you're doing also a lot of good work on open air. So this is uh, open air features that are uh, very important and, and also, I think, driving uh, the choice of Sweden uh, around open air. But the last three uh, I would like to highlight because the um, uh, open air standard has a very powerful capability um, um, that we see now emerging is that uh, because you have a truly open standard and a really dynamic CDR, um, what you would like is uh, real-time access on API level uh, to run powerful unified queries across CDRs. And this is a capability we don't see in other standards like HSF and FHIR. Um, but OpenAir really has this uh, uh, vendor neutral AQL, AQL language uh, and everything is stored in, in, in ADL uh, formats that you can really run these unified queries cross CDRs. And that's a very powerful feature. Um, also important is that um, uh, if you work together for specific use cases in specific areas, uh, it could be disease areas, but also geographically areas or research areas, you want to create together shared data models and you will have to be able to govern those data models uh, in, in a very simple fashion. And we will demo this uh, uh, later on. Uh, so when you create open air templates, um, we uh, really believe that uh, it's an important power of open air that you can actually push these templates to different uh, nodes uh, with a single push, uh, with a single button. Um, and uh, finally, uh, uh, it's also important to realize when you start thinking from uh, the CDR uh, and how you can connect and link the data uh, in, uh, in a federation. It is not a single federation. You can become a member of multiple federations. As mentioned, it could be a, ge a geographical uh, federation. It could be a research federation. It could be a data quality federation, all kinds of federations who want to do stuff with the data models or want to create their own use cases, leveraging the international data models. Um, so a single data node, uh, a single data repository could actually receive uh, both templates and AQLs from different kind of federations. And this uh, all together really creates a very powerful data layer. And that's what uh, we really believe uh, should be the next phase in, in uh, um, managing health data. If you add this together in a, in a, in a picture, um, Below, you will see the different uh, providers uh, collecting uh, health data. On top of this, there is a, a, a data layer. And uh, for sure, open air is very powerful in the clinical domain, but we won't be using uh, open air to store radiology imaging uh, data. Huh? So the big blocks blobs, uh, uh, will still be captured and stored in the DICOMS, TIFFs, the Adobe PDF kind of formats. Uh, and we also realize that there will be uh, and, and often influenced by national um, uh, regulations and national services, uh, administration components, financial components. And for this, uh, you could use uh, open air, but we believe that in many cases, uh, uh, either a country specific or HL7 fire uh, version for, for data uh, uh, would be uh, just great. Then this open API layer, um, 
it's important that uh, we believe that it will be a mix of standards to access this, uh, and that could be native open air. Uh, so you can build uh, native apps on top of this open data layer, leveraging all the power of open air to, to post the compositions, to query it. Um, but you could also use HL7 uh, uh, Fire to access uh, the open data layer, or for research environments, you could have a a data set that uh, 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 contains uh, anonymized data at the core and then publish this data in OMOP uh, format, for instance. So this is the high level picture of what we believe a open data layer looks like. Okay. Um, we did a lot of uh, um, studies internationally on, on uh, uh, these kind of standards. And um, from an UI point of view, we found it important that uh, on uh, um, advising around standards, we really get our hands dirty and try to understand, can we really build this vendor neutral data layer? So we drafted five principles. Um, and uh, with these principles, we uh, reached out to uh, Microsoft, but also to Better, um, to see if we could really build this vendor neutral data layer consisting of different nodes in, in, in the federated setup. Um, and in the MVP, uh, uh, we said that data handling must be 100% based on open vendor neutral standards. We want to embrace the FAIR principles. I think you're uh, well known with those. For sure, it must comply with data privacy and uh, regulations, and it must be very secure. We want to combine the best features of the different interoperability standards, um, open air for the persistency layer, but also the DICOM, for instance, as mentioned, for persisting uh, imaging data. Um, and uh, finally, um, from a UI point of view, I'm one of the uh, global leaders, uh, health technology leaders. What we build should be in the core country and language agnostic. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be in there. For sure, it must be in there. But the solutions you develop should, at the core, be country and language agnostic. So what is Connected Health Cloud? And what does a typical Connected Health Cloud setup look like? We believe that um, um, you should not force open air uh, on every part of the health ecosystem. Um, but in the end, you should be able to leverage open air to get access to the health uh, uh, to the health data. So there could be vendors uh, who have developed a, a, a bespoke solution. They're already in the market for a couple of years, and there's maybe not a big incentive to embrace open air because their data formats are not so complex, because they already have uh, HL7 uh, APIs that uh, give full access to their data. Um, so we believe that we should have a mix and match of different types of nodes. And um, for instance, the, the open it platform node, that would be a, a, a node where you spin up a clinical data repository on uh, the cloud and you give uh, access to that data node um, through the HL7 Fire or HL7 CDA kind of uh, interfaces where they can ingest data so that the data becomes available for sharing. This is a typical setup which you might have for pharmacies or maybe for GPs, uh, or you could also use it for patient apps uh, where there's uh, uh, specific apps that can actually push the data in HL7 Fire format. You will ingest this and transform and persist it in open air format. Uh, and this will all be done fluently on, on the platform. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, mainly interested when you um, uh, don't have that much diversity in, in data, uh, like the pharmacies, they're really focused at uh, the pharmaceutical point at the medications. Um, so that's where you could spin up an open that platform kind of node. If you look at a, uh, a, a hospital, um, it depends a bit. In the Netherlands, for instance, and, and there's a lot of other countries, of course, uh, who bought EMRs, we have uh, Epic uh, and we have a local vendor and uh, they will not uh, adopt open air in the short term. Uh, we might hope uh, they will in the future, but that's not a very realistic scenario, we think. Um, well, it depends a little bit on the vendor, I think. Uh, um, but an open at facade node will augment your application landscape and you will uh, sync the data from uh, a bespoke EMR into the open format. And we already see this happening uh, both in the Netherlands, but also very importantly in Germany, because they are also now moving pretty fast in the open air space. Um, so you will aggregate the data in, in a facade so that the facade uh, holds the, uh, the patient data, the health data, and you can uh, hook this node into the federation uh, for querying uh, purposes. 
But you could, of, of course, also buy uh, an open and source uh, EMR, where at the core, the database uh, or the, the repository holding the data is already open air, and you want to link that uh, node into the federation. Uh, um, as mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm working and living in the Netherlands, uh, and in the Netherlands, we already have vendors like NADAP and Code24 who have a, at the core open air uh, under the hood. Uh, so you want to link those also in the uh, in the federation. And finally, there's the open at core, and that's more meant for secondary use, where you um, are not so interested in having a transaction repository, but a repository that's uh, feasible for uh, high volume querying for transformation uh, and doing all kind of stuff in the area of research or machine learning uh, training, those kind of things. Let's have a little bit more of a deep dive in what that looks like. So I mentioned open at platform. Um, so the EMR is the EMR and um, the GP or the pharmacy can still use their EMR as they were used to. But in the meantime, they want to have this full view on all the open air data, on all the health uh, data available. And they want also to share uh, the data they have available that's relevant for sharing. So they can post that data using a FHIR or a CDA uh, interface, uh, and maybe in the future others as well. And those data will be transformed and kept on the platform in a separate uh, CDR on the full data control of the uh, provider with that specific EMR. So it will augment their uh, um, bespoke EMR. Uh, they will still have full data uh, uh, controllership uh, but it can now be linked into a open air federation. Um, and in the meantime, they also get the feature to have, for instance, a context lounge uh, where they can open up uh, the full 360 view uh, of the data available in the federation. Um, so here you mix and match uh, the system you already have, you're used to, uh, and you don't need to change because you can share the, uh, the limited data sets you have. And in the meantime, you can profit from a full view so that you really have the 360 understanding of the patient when needed and when you get access uh, uh, on uh, those data um, managed by the access controls of the different CDRs. Then the open at facade. Um, with an open at facade, um, as mentioned, you will sync the data into a CDR, and that CDR could sit in the cloud, it could sit on-prem, as long as it's, uh, you can reach that uh, in a secure fashion and link it uh, into the federation, um, uh, it will work. And so you will have an EMR, could be uh, uh, any EMR that allows access at data level, you have to sync it. And for sure, that will be uh, some heavy lifting, but you can do this use case by use case and then opening up your existing data landscape. And it's not only the EMR, it could be a PDMS, it could be uh, other solutions in, uh, in the provider space where you want to sync the data. Um, and in this fish fashion, you can mix the, the bespoke uh, EMR screens and all kinds of functionalities, maybe also around logistics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you can also have this context lounge where you can have access to the full federation view, the, the shared data view. And then for sure, there's the open at source. And in this case, actually, there is no difference between the CDR holding the data at the source and the CDR data that's uh, shared with the federation. Um, so you actually link your uh, source component uh, in a secure fashion in the federation uh, so that uh, uh, you are already using open air and you can use more open air to have the 360 view. And now let's dive a little bit deeper in the technology. So if you want to set up uh, a connected health cloud uh, in the fashion that we uh, we have been doing, uh, we use a, uh, a cloud platform, Microsoft Azure. Uh, on this platform, we use uh, Docker Kubernetes because we also believe that it's, it's, it's important to have cloud native components and that those components can work in, in uh, hybrid cloud settings as well. And uh, in some cases, in some countries, uh, there's still a strong push for uh, on-prem kind of installations. Uh, so that's all feasible. Uh, and for sure, you must have uh, uh, HTTP, secure HTTP to, uh, to access uh, the data, but uh, in a secure fashion. On a high level, and this is what we are going to demo uh, today. So you will have Azure. Um, and uh, on Azure, you will have your 
um, uh, your API and the API uh, can post uh, queries uh, using an Azure function to different uh, CDRs that run in a Kubernetes cluster. And that CDR uh, uh, for sure could be one or more better CDRs, but as it's vendor neutral and is, is open air is an open standard, it could be also CDRs from another uh, make. And as why we found it important to test if the better uh, API is really compatible also with what we see uh, with other CDRs. So we also took an open source uh, CDR and checked if uh, the Azure functions and how we use that uh, work in a, a multi-vendor setup, and uh, it does. That's the good news. Um, Casper, I think we're almost at the demo. Yes. I should stop sharing, I think, and give you... Yeah, then <clears throat> I will uh, start sharing my screen. Uh, so what we'll now do is we'll go to the demo of uh, yeah, what Eric just uh, showed you. Um, let's see. Yes, can everybody still see my screen? Okay, great. Um, so what I will now be presenting is the uh, demo or sandbox environment of the connected health cloud we've been uh, creating over the past couple of years. Uh, just uh, to let you know, this environment isn't meant to be used by clinicians. It's pure uh, demonstration environment of uh, the data layer uh, to visualize what's going on over there. So going to the, uh, to the actual screen, we have this menu bar at the top, at which you can see we have hospital A, B, and C, of which hospital A is running on uh, the better software, Hospital B and C are running Airbase. That's the open source uh, implementation of open air. And then we have our federation layer. Now, what I will first do is I will show you some fun basic functionality of the uh, uh, clinical data repository. And then we'll move to the federation layer to show the functionality of uh, what it's doing. And then we'll uh, look at how templates uh, can be managed throughout the federation. So uh, let's take hospital B. Uh, you can see we have some basic functionality. We can list all the EHRs, all templates, and we have some input functionality. So if I go to list all EHRs, I can press the button and an API call goes out to the uh, Airbase server and retrieves all EHRs that are available. So you can see for each patient, there's a single EHR available. We can click on it, then it will go into it and retrieve all compositions that are uh, related to this specific EHR. And then we can also further uh, dive into this composition to visualize the actual contents based upon the template. Now for this, uh, Sandbox environment, we have used the Metlox um, uh, software package. That's an open source uh, software package that is used to visualize uh, open air templates. And these templates are currently being uh, generated at runtime based on the template that's uh, in the server. So you can see in this case, we have some temperature values and blood pressure values in here, but the rest is still empty. Uh, we can also go in here and say, give me all templates that are available on the server. And you can see we have a vitals template, some corona templates, blood pressure, all kinds of uh, different templates. Now, this functionality is, is exactly the same as for hospital uh, C and for hospital A. Uh, but of course, the actual contents of those servers will differ from each other because they are not their own uh, clinical uh, environments. So th this is the basic functionality of those uh, open air servers, but I guess most of you will already be familiar with this. So now let's go into the federation layer. 
Uh, this federation layer also has some functionality. We can retrieve compositions by patient, list all your EHRs, uh, graph blood pressure values uh, for a patient, and upload a template. Um, now I will go to list all EHRs. Um, I will press this button, and what will happen is a single query will go to our Azure function that you show. Uh, yeah, that you saw in the previous slide by Eric. And the query is being sent to it. And this query gets forwarded to all three uh, hospitals in this case. Those hospitals will um, yeah, gather their answer, give it back to the federation. And the federation will uh, aggregate all the different replies and give it back to the requester as a single package. So as you can see, uh, here we have the EHRs, and at the top you see server. In this case, it says Airbase 002, which relates to hospital C. And then below here we see a uh, single query. We can get all EHRs that are available uh, throughout the federation. Just checking in, is my connection still good? I'm receiving some messages that my network is stable. That's okay uh, on my side. Okay. But, but I'm in the Netherlands, so maybe maybe that could be the issue. Okay, then I will continue. And if it starts breaking up, please uh, let me know. Um, well, now we see that we can retrieve all HRs, but now let's uh, dive a little bit more into a patient. Uh, point of view. So um, what I will now do is I will go to the graph blood pressure values. Uh, and what I will now do is uh, if I enter a name in here, I can say get data and it will, will retrieve all uh, blood pressure values for, well, in this case, myself and graph it out. And based on the uh, color of these dots. These are turquoise and pink. These are, well, okay, in here it mentions still region East, but this is hospital B. And for the green and blue one, it comes from hospital C. So now with a single query, you can get an uh, entire overview of this patient's blood pressure values instead of having only uh, the data from your own clinical environment. So only being able to see hospital B. And in this Hospital A, B, C. Now your line gets name. a bit, uh, a bit bad, Casper. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, your line was a bit uh, empty. Okay. Um, in this case, you've seen that I entered my name here, and in the previous uh, overview of all EHRs, you might have seen that it only showed the uh, EHR. Indeed. And for this example, we have uh, mimicked the, the functionality of the demographic server. We haven't implemented the full demographic server in this instance because that's uh, a very country specific implementation uh, how this will work in the federation. Uh, due to regulations, but also uh, data that's available to use this functionality. We uh, upload a template. So right? now we, yeah, yeah we we'll, we'll move to the templates. Um, what we can also do is uh, distribute templates throughout the, uh, using the federation. So everybody has the same template available. So I will go to the archetype designer uh, by better in which we can create a new template. So it's a new uh, template. And then I will uh, take the uh, type of encounter and I will call it uh, demos reading uh, six, create. And I'm guessing most of you will be familiar with these templates, so I won't go too much into how uh, these work, but let's just add a couple of 
Aktab Shane, fifty Epgarsh for there it is. Uh, yeah, that's also modified a little bit. Let's take out this uh, 10 minute value and the five minutes value. And we will add the uh, blood pressure value. Okay, it's in here. Now, what I will, will do is I will export this template and upload it to the Federation. So I'm going to say export uh, as an operational template. It's taking a little bit longer than usual, <laughs> but it did that. Okay, so now the template has been uh, downloaded to my computer and in the federation layer, I'm now going to say upload template. I will choose the OPT file that has just been downloaded, this one. Now I'm going to uh, load it into uh, the front end, so the current web page. It has loaded it. And now I can say upload to federation. What it's now doing is, uh, in this case, it failed, unfortunately. Uh, but what it should do is it. Uh, takes this template and uploads it to the uh, different uh, hospitals throughout the Federation, which results into the functionality that uh, you will have uh, these templates available uh, for every hospital that has joined the Federation. And this way you can make sure that everybody is speaking the same language uh, in this Federation. So everybody has access to the same template and can build their own front end on top of it. But in the core, we'll speak the same template language. Thanks, Casper. I think and, from a time time purpose, uh, yeah. we got only an hour, so that's. Uh, I think the concept is clear and um, uh, better already demoed uh, a lot of the better components. Uh, and for sure, the user interface of the Better Studio and everything you create is uh, way more sophisticated than just rendering uh, with map blocks. Um, but I think for the purpose of today, uh, it was more to show you uh, the Federation concept to run multiple CDRs, link them on a whitelist, and then be able to post templates and query those repositories. Uh, if we have another opportunity, we'll do a more full-blown demo and prepare some specific use cases if you like. Um, to conclude, I would like to share two more slides. Let's see. There you go. So what's important is if you work with this federated setup, uh, there is no unnecessary duplication of data because you can keep the data under the data controller. Um, we use data minimization. So from a data privacy point of view, the access control and the locking is really done by the data controller. And we're not moving around those data uh, to places where we might not uh, be using them. Um, there is, of course, the flexibility to link a single data node to multiple federations. It could be regional, national for Sweden, or for international research federations. Um, it also enables uh, third-party solutions to run on that open data layer, uh, both at an individual node transactional level or at federation level to query all the nodes. Um, and um, uh, I think also important from a, a business continuity point of view, if you have sing issues with a single node, that will impact only that node, uh, not the rest of the, the federation. Um, and it also accommodates uh, uh, the different uh, uh, situations you have currently. So the choices uh, made already by the pharmacies or the GPs, et cetera, maybe you don't want to switch them or you do want to switch them uh, or keep your current EMRs or buy uh, EMRs at source. From a federation point of view, as long as you make sure that uh, they choose one of the different flavors of uh, data nodes, uh, you can cater for uh, the open federation. Um, Yes, and finally, the, the, the decentral managed nodes uh, can serve as a full-blown vendor neutral storage uh, for, for, uh, for structured data. 
um, we uh, used uh, this concept uh, and, and uh, also together with Better and OpenLine, which is a Dutch managed service company, uh, we used this in the region uh, Zuid Limburg in the Netherlands for market sounding there. And they tested us uh, uh, pretty thoroughly on different elements. And as you can see, we scored a 3.7 out of four, which uh, relates to, a, I believe, a 9.2 on a scale of 10. Um, and this uh, really left uh, a lot of the competition uh, way behind uh, in the way we set up uh, uh, the Connected Health Cloud. Uh, and that's the presentation so far. And it gives us exactly the minutes we hoped for some final Q and A's. But I see that Jovan was already very helpful with answering a lot of the questions. So let's see. Uh, we have two more questions if I'm right to answer the number five and six. I mean, I can comment number five, but I think also Eric knows really well, uh, soon well the, the answer. Uh, so the local tools are uh, our, let's say, one of the key value propositions apart from the scalability performance and other features that you have seen on, on Wednesday. And at the moment, the forms are not, as Eric has also written in his question, not standardized. So forms, local studio and CDR have additional capabilities that's currently no other platform provides. And as such, they are tightly coupled to our digital health platform. Uh, I don't know what future will bring, but for now, the forms and these developments are part of the digital health platform. And as long as you run it, uh, you will have it. Yeah, and, and Jovan, I think for the forms, what's important is they start off from the template structure, of course. Eh? So what we do yes. in Sandbox is we re render the same template in Matblocks, which is just, it just will do it uh, in, in an instant. Uh, but you can also uh, do the, the initial render in, in, in different components. Uh, you can see that uh, even on the C international CKM, they also render these uh, these kind of forms. Uh, but sure, if you have logic in forms uh, and you want to move to a different solution, you will need to redo that kind of work. But the cool thing about low-code studios is it's not that difficult to do that work. Yeah? Uh, the hard work is in, in getting the right data sets in the right coding, uh, setting up everything in a secure fashion. Uh, maybe I could just come. Uh, some there is some hard work in doing really good forms, etc. So, so the thing we're looking for is to have exit strategies. We can understand, of course, if you don't have a license for the platform, you can't keep developing. But it would be good to have some kind of business offers. So if you need to end, then you can pay this amount or whatever to be able to keep running the things you've already made. Okay, you can't update them, but at least we can do a soft transition. And things like that would be interesting to see okay. how would EY and Better Together think about those things. Otherwise, we do a lock-in at another level, a less drastic level than having the data locked in, of course. It would be good to see you thinking about those things in the future. Yeah, from an EY point of view, I can say that uh, we would be very happy if also the forms uh, on open air, everything is an open standard and everybody complies with that for sure. Uh, but if you look at what's available in open standards now, I think the OPT uh, template is, is already giving you a lot of uh, vendor agnostic you see uh, in, in, in the platform. But it's mostly about business uh, and if there's a, a possibility to do a soft transition. Um, yeah, for sure. So we'll take that question. We understand. So think about that and you can come back in with as soon as you want. And I think we have one additional question for you, Eric, the number seven that is in the end. Didn't see it yet. Yeah, how is the access control handled in the federation with a mixed CDR? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a very good one. What, what we really believe is that data controllership uh, is, is key and uh, every single node should have a accountable data controller with proper access controls for the solution they chose to trust their access controls in. So if you rest, have a REST API, um, uh, we will only pass the credentials and then you have to decide at the, the, the CDR level, um, do we actually want to share these data with the, uh, the person who wants access to these data. So access control should be fully on the, the data controller. And just to give you an example, the VIP example, uh, it might be that you actually want to filter out uh, VIPs or have them pseudomized or other kind of tricks. Those are all 
uh, real use cases we see uh, happening and it's it's very important that you as a data controller uh, know what's happening with the data you are accountable for and that you have the proper access controls um, and that's something that's, uh, that's 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 very important so the federation is only brokering uh, the queries uh, it's not telling that you should answer Good, great. Do we have any additional questions from the audience? We have some uh, more minutes before we have there to. Is number six still that hasn't been answered, so maybe it's also, I guess. Yeah, you're right. You're on. For the overall model, um, it depends a bit. I think, um, um, let's try it. No, I can't. I can't answer that. That's for me. Um, uh, for EY, uh, what we've done is we set up this uh, on Azure in a very secure environment, and and we tested the use cases we wanted to test. Um, but this is uh, maybe Casper. You have an idea, but uh, otherwise we have to take that uh, and come back to you later. Yeah, we should come back on the topic. Okay. So by that, I think we have answered all of the questions. Of course, number one is a broad question that was posted before the meeting, but hopefully we have been able to answer that during the meeting. If not, <laughs> I can just uh, repeat it a bit. I mean, for sure, EY is a large company. We have a lot of experience from similar kinds of projects, from transformations, hospital transformation, both in a more generic sense, but also when it comes to this kind of open platforms. We have also broad experience and knowledge in the more business related area, the transformation from an overall perspective, and not to forget about change management. And on top of that, we have our solutions that we have presented today to be able to set it in a broader ecosystem, the better platform. But what is relevant for you is more depending on how you will, in the end, write the RFP. But hopefully you can see the value that we are bringing to this context. Yeah. So if we don't have... Yeah, if, you, if you allow yeah. me one yeah, additional would like sure. to make. Um, we have been working on, at global level as EY for quite a number of years now to advocate these vendor neutral data layers and we are very happy that we see this moving now coming because health health data is there for life and as part of that we are really investing a lot of effort uh, and money in, in in supporting also the open air international foundation uh, both uh, by becoming a partner but also by discussing with the different vendors how we can really uh, make sure that this vendor neutrality uh, and, and, and compliance with the open standard is maintained. Uh, so I think as EY, we also have a, an important role in making sure that the entire ecosystem starts to, to move forward and keeps converging. Uh, so there's uh, uh, always the risk with standards that they uh, that vendors will, will start to, to do their own specific stuff. And that's why we actually took different makes of, uh, of CDRs and put them on Azure and tested, uh, can we do the tricks we want them to do uh, from an open point of view? And, and we're very happy that open air uh, actually put so much effort themselves already as a, as an international community in uh, maintaining these standards. But EY is really committed and we want to donate as well uh, our thinking to the International Open Air Foundation. Well, thank you. I think it, it's nine o'clock, but I, I said at the beginning of it, we can, we can use a few minutes more if needed. So are there any more questions? Total silence. I mean, I think that means that you made a terrific presentation. <laughs> um, and about this sixth question, uh, I, I, you can you can send the answer to that when you have it to me, yes, and I will distribute it. 